We have um, Senator Sanders' office on the phone, uh, representing him is Erica Kimball. And we have um, Tom Berry from Senator Leahy's office on the phone. And in person, we have Congressman Peter Welch. Uh, we just wanted to welcome everyone here today. We really appreciate the, the time, um, A, of our congressional delegation and B to the Vermont Dairy Producers Alliance and their members for being flexible enough to change the meeting from yesterday to today because this is sort of our every two to three week check-in and we really uh, appreciate and don't wanna miss these opportunities. Um, so Congressman Welch, um, thank you. And I know that you're busy back down in DC and you're trying to help Vermont and other states round of federal funding, which I think you'll be here from today, uh, is really needed. So if you want, why don't you just take a few minutes and tell us what your week's been. Um, okay, um, first of all, um, Heather, thanks so much uh, for putting this together and uh, really appreciate the folks from uh, Senator Sanders and Senator Leahy's office being on the phone. Uh, and I wanna thank each of you for, uh, for, for doing this. Here's the dilemma. I'll talk about what's in the bill. But my fundamental understanding is that with the collapse in the milk price, the thing that is really going to make a difference would be direct payments uh, to support that milk price. Because with this um, persistent problem of getting less than the cost of production, and then with the collapse in the price in March, almost anything short of direct uh, checks. Uh, to help get through this time when everybody's treading water or sinking. That's fundamentally uh, what our farmers need, our dairy farmers need. And the worry that we all have is that how long are we gonna be able, even the best run, best managed, uh, best uh, positioned farms, how long are we, they gonna be able to sustain this? And so my view is that the only thing that really can work is somehow getting direct money uh, into, into the page of the, the, the milk check. Uh, there's political hurdles to having that happen. And what we've done so far is put money into the, into the program to buy commodities, to pay for some spilt milk to uh, supplement hunger programs. And that's always terrific, but it's very indirect. Uh, the the secretary has some billions of dollars uh, in the first CARES package. And in this, the second one that we're going to vote on in the House, uh, but we're, we're going to run into some obstacles, I think, in the Senate, we'd have another $16 billion, uh, for all producers, not just dairy. Uh, it has about a $500 million donation uh, to some of the food banks that would buy the product. But again, I think that is somewhat... Uh, indirect in terms of meeting the, the scope of the financial need. Uh, number three, we do make some flexibility on the, per, the payroll protection plan, but in talking to um, most folks, and I see Bill Rao is on the, phone, uh, is on the call and can speak to this, uh, that, that in the idle loans, the economic injury disaster loans are not working really well. The economic injury loan, when we voted for it, most of us thought that, that would mean at least $10,000 in immediate money, and then some low interest or no interest loans. Uh, but the way it's been interpreted by the SBA is that it that, that 10000 is only up to 1000 per employee, and they're not allowing uh, any visa workers to be included in employees, which I think is an unfortunate um, uh, carryover of the, uh, the the very fraught immigration politics. <laughs> Those visa workers are employees, and the intent that I certainly have is to have that uh, aid be available to uh, to the uh, to the farmers. 
Now, just a, a couple of things. You know, Senator Leahy, of course, is in a position uh, and has always been tremendous help to us by virtue of his vice chair of the Ag Committee. And he's got a pretty close relationship with Secretary Purdue. So he's been taking the point on advocating with Purdue about trying to have an emphasis on doing the what it can best be done for dairy. So he kind of carries the load on that. And he'll continue that. Uh, my experience with Secretary Purdue, Purdue is he's got kind of a big farm orientation, you know, big or, or go big or, or go home. Um, the the aspect of this is troubling to me. There's a lot of one of the things that's starting to emerge in this whole pandemic is how vulnerable we are if we don't have local production systems. You know, domestic production of, of um, medical equipment. Uh, domestic uh, production of, of these uh, ventilators that have been very important, and but local food production. And one of the reasons that I think it's absolutely essential that somehow, some way we keep you all going is that if the doors close, then how do we reopen them? It really gets very, very difficult, obviously, to do that. So um, we sent a lot. So in this bill, there's going to be more money but whether that gets to the local farm and gets there in a timely way is still open for question. There's that 16 billion, there's the 500 million donation for food, there's the PPP eligibility, uh, and those things can potentially help, help. But if you're sitting in your farm looking at your milk check and looking at your expenses, can you have any confidence uh, that what is being what's been done and what's being proposed tomorrow uh, will help you. And that's part of what we'll discuss today. Um, as you know, uh, a number of us sent a letter signed by uh, Patrick and Bernie and me uh, to the secretary, um, uh, urging some other steps that we think would be helpful to manage the oversupply. I mean, there's, there's too much milk right now. Uh, compensate producers for milk that has been dumped. That was not a voluntary choice. That was an, an absolute uh, existential necessity. Uh, reopening the dairy margin coverage program uh, for 2020 enrollment, because uh, that obviously would help uh, if it could be retroactive, because as you get, as I understand, the price plummet happened late March and is continuing. Um, in convening an emergency hearing uh, to establish a temporary price floor for class one fluid milk. Uh, to stop the cratering of prices. So that is a pers that's a picture of where uh, we're at in terms of the first uh, big CARES package that passed and what we're gonna be voting on tomorrow in the so-called HEROES Act, but a continuation of that uh, stabilization program for the country. And then what I just outlined were some of the things that uh, Bernie, Patrick and I are advocating uh, at the moment. And, um, so now I'll turn it over to you all, but I don't know if uh, uh, Heather, we want to hear from Patrick and Bernie's uh, offices before we continue. Sure, Eric, are you there? Uh, hello, everyone. Yes, I am here. Um, and I'm sorry that I can't be on a video. We aren't allowed to use Zoom. I was contemplating doing it through my personal computer. Uh, just so I could see all your faces. I, I miss seeing um, folks, especially farmers. So <laughs> um, sorry, I had to be on the line. Um, I don't have much to add. Thanks so much, uh, uh, Congressman Welch uh, and Heather and all the uh, farmers for organizing this call. We're really here today to hear from you. Um, just wanted to mention our offices are all working uh, with farmers right now on the on these programs, um, whether it's PPP or the EIDL or even um, navigating if they're uh, eligible for PUA for the unemployment. Um, I missed the uh, direct payment uh, session today with USDA, um, but I plan on listening to it in a little bit. So I'm very curious to see what kind of support is coming to our dairy farmers for that. Um, you know, and as always, you know, we're trying to address sort of the current, uh, this current crisis, but, you know, Senator Sanders is also always thinking ahead um, 
to what what we can do to further improve this industry and um, stabilize milk prices moving forward. So um, I think our Senator's policy advisor, Emily Rampone, is also on the call. So we just really look forward to hearing from you today. And um, and thanks again for having us. Sure. Tom Berry, are you on? Yes, I am. Uh, thanks. And uh, I'll note that um, Andrew uh, Berenberg, the Senator's uh, lead advisor on agriculture in, in, in D.C., is uh, also on the call. You know, from Senator Leahy's perspective, and of course the delegation uh, always works together on on uh, dairy issues and most ag issues. And the Congressman can talk about some recent things that we've worked on together. The <coughs> legislation that uh, is uh, been introduced in the House, uh, we're looking at on the Senate side. There's big differences on a lot of issues between the Senate and the House, but Senator Leahy will have the opportunity to weigh in on a number of uh, priorities related to that bill when it begins to move in the Senate. And of course, one thing that keeps coming back up is the dairy margin coverage, uh, the opportunity for reopening that. I think uh, Secretary Purdue has made it clear that um, that's not likely to happen administratively. So that's one thing we're focused on. I'll um, not say much more, give you give everybody else a, a chance to talk, but uh, do uh, track closely the rollout, um, which is eminent of the uh, direct payments to dairy producers uh, through FSA. And um, you know, with that, I'll just uh, listen if I can be helpful with questions or Andrew can going forward, I'm sure we'll uh, jump in. Thank you, I appreciate that. So I just wanted to let the congressional delegation know that the Vermont Dairy Producers Alliance has been active and engaged in uh, the legislative process, as well as working with the administration to try to get some of this aid out to farmers, which it would be to cover or partially cover their losses. I'm not sure that this first round would, would cover their losses. Um, and, and in doing this, we've also helped uh, members of the Vermont Dairy Producers Alliance uh, try to get into programs like IDLE and PPP. Um, and I think we have board members here today, as well as members. And I think what we've done in front of the House and Senate Ag Committees is we've more or less had a roundtable discussion. So I think what I'd like to do is hand it off to Bill Rao, who's the chair of the Vermont Dairy Producers Alliance Board. Um, and we also have Amanda St. Pierre, who is our executive director. And then <coughs> after that, uh, we can just let people weigh in. We have um, certainly, I can see people on the, on the phone and on Zoom that are <coughs> hard on the ground and can certainly provide you with um, a, a real understanding of what they're going through. So, Bill? Yes, good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to thank the uh, uh, congressional delegation for the time they're giving us. I know you guys are busy and uh, we appreciate your time. I read the letter that uh, you and the senator sent to uh, the secretary and I, I think the biggest thing that that gets my attention is the uh, floor under class one. Under class one, that 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 would do a lot to support the effort. I mean, uh, if the farmer doesn't have enough money to keep the lights on, then there's no way they can pay the vendors. Um, mm -hmm. We've been working on a couple of things, and uh, I talked with you, Congressman, a few weeks ago about an idea that I had, and. We're trying to gain some traction um, at the national level with, with that idea, which was to use a government voucher uh, program to do something with uh, exports to uh, make the markets move. And we have some major export countries that we work with. I know, for example, Mexico's peso is uh, a small fraction of our dollar, which right now is worth, I think, more than a dollar and they have to feed their people. They're our chief export market. It would seem to me that we could do something through a uh, voucher system to, uh, I, I don't want to use the word subsidize, but uh, through a feeding program, it, if in other words, if they're going to give us an order for millions of dollars worth of a product, it seems like we could do something to offer them something in return uh, toward a feeding program. Uh, 
And I know one of the things that we've been hearing is that a lot of big money has been written in DC and not all of it is showing up where it was intended to go. And I don't think Vermont farmers have gotten very much of it, maybe some, but uh, I don't think that we've gotten too much of it. And how do you, how do you put the money where it should be? If you work through the, uh, uh, the ag marketing service with a voucher program, uh, it would go where it's intended. And once those markets start to move and the product, we, we're talking about commercial disappearance. So we don't stand in the shadow like we did in 2010 after that horrible year in 2009. Uh, we'd be able to do something because we'd have some money in our milk checks. This month, for example, now we milk 900 cows. We make short of 27 million pounds of milk a year. And this month, our, our milk check will be short $170,000 per mm. month. Now, the cows can't know that. The employees can't know that. Nobody's supposed to know that. But uh, it finally shows up, doesn't it? And so how does... How is the quickest way to get money to those farms so that they can continue doing what they do? And it would, it, I would think that a, a voucher program would work fairly efficiently. Um, I won't, uh, I won't go on too much here. There are other folks that, that should speak, but uh, uh, I will tell you that I have a friend in California who is, who is working with, uh, has been speaking with Peter Vitaliano, and I have someone that is trying to arrange a call for me with someone from Tom Vilsack's office so that we can see if we can figure out a way to put this thing together and make it move. So I may be in touch with your office or offices, uh, yeah. with senators also, uh, here going forward. Uh, trying to come up with any idea we can to make things move. Well, that I appreciate that, Bill. And you really, I think, confirming what I concluded listening to you and others, and that is uh, there's got to be a substitute between the cost of production and the price you're getting paid now, whether it's voucher or direct payment. Right. Uh, you know, that that is so bone chilling to hear what your uh, gap is going to be, $170,000. I mean, that's, that is a huge amount of money. Well, it makes an impression on you, I can say. <laughs> uh, I, I would... Go ahead. Well, it, it does make an impression. You're, you're being calm and direct, but I just can only imagine what that's like for your family to deal with. Thank right. you. Right, right. Well, we have some good folks on here. I'd like to turn it over to Amanda St. Pierre, who is the executive director for Vermont Dairy Producer Alliance. Amanda. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, uh, Congressman Welch and Senator Leahy's office and Senator Sanders. We certainly appreciate the represent representation Vermont has always gotten from the three of you and um, hard times, hard conversations, some reoccurring themes. I think some sound familiar to the past times, you know, um, and through hardship, maybe some good changes can come. And I think that's what all of us here vested into Vermont Dairy are holding on to, but we have to make it there and our boat is full of holes. Um, we're vested in this industry. We made it through some really tough times, felt good about coming into 2020, and then as all Americans, COVID-19 hit and no one could prepare financially as in mentally and emotionally. And I think the effects of this will be seen for years to come. And one of the lessons we're hoping that may come out of this is the need for regional food production and processing and infrastructure and safety of our food products. You know, we're seeing how hard it is to depend on other countries when we need essential um, you know, a face mask and clothing to take care of our Americans, but right. equally scary that our food will not be made here or made in this region. And 
we are optimistic. We are progressive thinking. We are diversifying. Uh, we've diversified. We've changed our ways so much um, since we began working with you in 2006. And but right now, the issue at hand is how to get through this crisis. And we appreciated the PPP program. I think a lot of our members took advantage of it. But I'd be remiss to say there's a group that could not take advantage of it because they don't have employees. They live right out of their milk check. Their son, their daughter-in-law, their grandson work on the farm, but they live out of that paycheck. And so now they're, they have not only no money in their paycheck, they have negative money in their paycheck. And so they didn't get that assistance. And then we directed them to the PUA program. Um, and we listened to the governor say that checks should be cut this week for any remaining people that were having conflict. But I've checked with my farmers and as of yet, they have not received it, nor have they gotten any feedback that, you know, they're in process. So that's concerning. Um, and then we talk about the idle program, which early on we were optimistic we were included. Then we weren't, then you had to straighten them out. <laughs> and get them to allow us again, and then they cap it. And for some, it could be a very good option. For others, not so much because they already have so much debt. So, you know, we are very, you know, kind of eager to see funds come into our industry and equally eager to be recognized as, as essential. Essential not only to this country, but to our state. And in the early days, it was a little disconcerting that we weren't listed on that list, um, but yet we're providing a food source in a country where we have one in five children going to bed hungry, which is outstanding right. to me. I, I can't even fathom um, in our country being as progressive as we are and the food that we're making, that we're not getting it where it needs to go. That, that's sad. That's just really sad to me. We participated this last, uh, I guess last Friday, with a milk giveaway to show our support for Vermonters. And we gave over 4,000 gallons of milk. And um, it was very heartening to see families come through the line. Some thanking us, they hadn't had milk in several weeks. Their kids were excited to be able to have cereal. Um, some people were actually in tears. Um, my daughter and daughter-in-laws came away very, very humbled that um, so many people want milk um, and would use milk, but they just right now during everything can't afford it. And then it was limited at stores early on. So, you know, it's an interesting dynamic. We're very hopeful for what you're working on. Um, we support Bill's thinking on the vouchers and any encouragement you can give in that area, certainly, and look to see the discussions and any direct payments um, coming up that we could get into our farmers' hands mm -hmm. in the near future. You know, we really, we really can't delay. Um, open to questions at the end, but I do, I do want to um, pass this on to Josh Poulin, who you know is invested into our infrastructure here in Vermont and his family has been for years to just kind of give you that perspective because the money that Bill created is short would actually be some money probably owed to someone like him. So Josh, I'm going to invite you to jump on the call. Great. Well, um, thank you, Amanda. Um, Thanks everybody. Thanks senators, congressmen. Um, yeah. So obviously I got both views of this, um, own a dairy and also own a feed business here. It's been in the state for 88 years as of March this year. And, uh, you know, we lived through, I, I think there's, there's this COVID thing's a big disaster coming out of a big disaster already, which is a little disheartening to me. Amanda said it, Bill's talked about it, but we've had, um, We've had a pretty rough run in food for the last uh, the last you know four years before this, and then to have something like this when we started getting a glimmer of hope, um, and uh, 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 Congressman Welch, I appreciate your you know we need these we need to have food in each one of you know kind of local food I guess as it will. Um, I'm glad that you guys are recognizing that because I think that maybe gets lost a little bit sometimes and, and how important that is if disasters strike, how it is important to have diversification all over the country. And we've, uh, so uh, it's been, um, this has been obviously uh, challenging um, on all businesses. Uh, we are an essential business. Um, 
and uh, you know we're all essential businesses as farms. Uh, but even for some of my employees and some of the stuff that's going on, it's been it's been a pretty uh, challenging. You guys still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Tell me about that, Josh. Well, you know, um, I think you know I'll, I'll mention something outside the industry, but like some of this um, some of this money that got spewed out um, in other places, which I'm okay with that. I understand you got to support all industries, but um, like on the unemployment side, as an yeah. employer that had to keep people working, wow. That 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 was hard, and it still continued to be hard. You know, I, I I had people ask me to get laid off. You know, um, right. we can't lay people off. I mean, we 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 are providing essential stuff, but you know, right. so that's the dilemma where a person will make more on unemployment than working. Yeah, so, but, yeah. yeah. There was some yeah. dilemma of that, and some dilemma yeah. of some of the other stuff. So when I look at the people that are feeding these other people, and I see that stuff going on, and people trying to take maybe I should, I don't know, lack of better words, advantage of kind of a bad situation. It, 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 it's, um, it's a little bit hard because honestly, as a man and Bill and, and you guys know, um, when you own your own uh, business and your own farm and, and you're trying to run these things, um, some of those things that are, are meant as good in, in intention end up being uh, <laughs> used against you and I, I i think some of that money that's it's already out there but could have definitely been used not just in in just in ag but in other places to really i guess um support the essential stuff and the things that we need to continue um make, making this country you know uh survive for the next however long this is going to be i mean i think there's all kinds of watch the news you, you don't know what to think right it we're going to have a second round. We're going to have this. We're going to open stuff. It's going to outbreak. It's going to, you know, and, and um, you know, obviously if it's changed how food and how people have operated. So um, I, I guess I would say at least going forward, I think we really have to, at least I, my advice would be to think about how, how it is and how many needs there are. I mean, I was reading something about theater and I don't remember somewhere down there and it was either in California, New York, and they were talking about, you know, how they needed 14 million to, dollars to run this and that you know um i'm biased but uh i think uh we better worry about food first um, mm -hmm. my sense um, yeah so uh, i i do i do really appreciate the support and i do i do think we have to think about I, I hope that i do think on another note and i know um whoever was on from senator sanders office uh sorry i missed the <coughs> um I do think we have to think about milk pricing going into the future and other things and our food supplies. And I think we have to keep that somewhat on our front burner as, as, as time goes on and, and, and mm -hmm. making sure that we, we don't forget this and that we continue to, you know, maybe look at the federal milk order and some of these other things that might be um, worthwhile uh, for us to, to, to make sure we don't end up back here because this right. may not be the last time. So. Um, with that, unless you've got, you know, I'll I'll stop there and pass. Yeah, it I appreciate how you're doing, Josh. I mean, you both as a producer and supplier, I mean, you got incredible challenges, and you're really essential to the well-being of the agricultural dairy community. So, thank you. Appreciate that. Well, I see that uh, Shannon Hill is on, and and her family runs a large farm in Bristol. Uh, Shannon, would you say a few words about your situation? Well, I, I guess I'm, let me back up just a little bit to say when our, we have our family meeting, which we do once, well, right now about once a month because we're planting crops, but usually once a week we get together with a family meeting. We came up with a plan for this year based on the projected milk prices. We got funding for to build two barns, to build a new manure pit. And we started on one of these projects and we lined up all of our contractors and the money starts going out the door, and then March 17th, roughly, things kind of just hit the rails. So this money that I set aside, or money that we went to our banker for, and I said, we want to do these things, our improvements for this year, we just had to stop, because we had to look at what was happening, not just to the fact that we can't sell our product, our milk prices would take that dive. So now money that I took as a bank loan to build something, I, if without any intervention, I'm going to live on that money all summer. Are we, mm -hmm. you know, we're milking, we were milking 2,300, we're drying quite a few off because um, we do need to reduce our production by 6% for our co-op. 
which we're willing to do, but you talk about reducing your, we just lost 30% of our income and the price of milk. And now I'm going to dump 6% of my milk down the drain mm. for the next three months. That's terrible. Months. So, terrible. you know, it's, it's been a financial hardship and we need to look at going forward in the future, that floor price that kind of Bill talked about, I agree with, but I think there's an immediate need. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have, I haven't lost any employees. I have kept my employees. We started out with 40 in January. I've got 46 employees right now. Wow. And I'm going to tell you we're paying them before we pay ourselves. <laughs> you know, wow. and I could do that for a few months. I, well, I mean, did you, had did that you, plan. Are you eligible for PPP or did you I try? Already, I'm already in the program. I'm already using the funds. You are. Okay, good. Yep. yep. So, I mean, we'll, we'll get through what we have the financing behind it, but you know, you talk about, well, you know, we got to tell, price tell up. the guys that we're going to build my barns. Right. They're out of job now. <laughs> right. No, that's a, that's incredible. I just can't imagine what it was like to have that decision to make those wonderful improvements and then suddenly to see get hit upside the head with this coronavirus. Oh, my goodness. Not the virus. Thank you. It's a response. Uh, Darlene, uh, would you uh, speak? Yeah, um, I, my name is Darlene Reynolds. Hi, Peter. Uh, hey, Darlene. And Tom, nice to see you got here, you guys again. Um, I uh, own Crosswinds Dairy and Daughters in Alberg, Vermont. I would be considered what you call a medium farm. And um, I, I feel like the rest of these guys that we've uh, tried to implement ourselves into a lot of these programs. Uh, um, and uh, at the same time, I uh, got some funding, but not all. Um, haven't heard much back from SBA. Um, and uh, I did have my husband actually apply for unemployment, but I haven't heard anything back from him either because my husband and I uh, don't collect a paycheck off the farm and um, never have. We just, whatever is left the milk check, that's what we get for payments and stuff for vehicles and stuff. And um, so uh, I got to say that family meetings have been interesting. I have two daughters that have both graduated from college now uh, trying to want to try to take the farm over and um, that's interesting too, and in trying to do these budget cuts and and take what we need to do to to move forward for throughout the summer. Um, I will say that I'm I'm with you, Peter. What do you do? The the one thing that you can afford to is possibly a direct payment, but how long can that last? Um, it, it would be nice to know how long this is going to be happening, um, but but nobody knows. Uh, sometimes they talk about they're going to start opening things up, and then of course if we have another string of uh, virus people people coming down with it that's going to be a, a determination on where things go from there so that's a little scary all the way around um i would say thank gosh that dairy farmers love their animals because i can see that some farmers especially that don't collect a paycheck and aren't getting an income and going into the negative i hope they don't walk away because that would be horrifying to think that they walk away from something that they've worked so hard to try to achieve because of the fact that they had to take such a huge pay cut um, and everything but um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear some of the things that are coming out. And, I'm, and I know that our delegation, at least from the state of Vermont, has always been for the dairy, dairy farmer. And I truly appreciate it. Um, and hope that we can find some sort of reasonable answer to what's going on right now. I do, like Bill said, I love the idea of class one um, being something that could be stabilized. And I also believe that we should work more on our global markets and uh, this voucher situation. That seems very interesting to me as well. And um, and to know that Vermont farmers are out there and we care and we want mm-hmm. to move forward with this. We just need to get past. We just need to get past this this pandemic. And and for my situation, I actually was really looking forward to uh, this year. Uh, the downside is is that my cooperative has asked me to cut 15%. And with me gearing up the way that I was, I'm actually trying to cut 25% mm. um, and drying off cows and getting ready cows pretty much on a daily basis because um, that's a huge cut to have to undertake. That is huge. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. That is tough. So your two daughters do want to, they'd like to be able to take over. They would love to. My uh, third daughter just graduated from UVM. Of course, no ceremonies, uh, bachelor's degree from the two plus two program. Uh, degree in animal science with a minor in entrepreneurship. So she still she still has the courage, she has the commitment, and she has the belief that you know 
milk is a nutritious, safe, you know, pure product. And, and she'd like to be the person to be able to put out there. And you know how it is. If we stop, say that we stop today and decide to not do it, what's the chances of ever getting back into it? Slim to none. Right, right, right. Well, thank you so much. Well, I see, uh, I see Clara Air with her uh, new baby. Uh, maybe Clara, could you uh, speak for a minute, please? And then we'll go to Tom Hickley after. You may uh -oh. uh, you also um, may notice that the have... fourth generation on Fairmont Farm is in her hands. Uh -oh. You haven't seen the video. Yeah. Oh, wow. What a beautiful baby. <laughs> As Paul does all the, the background noise, I'm one of those ones without child care right now. You're, um, you're just fine. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> um, I want to thank everybody for all the good work that's been done so far. Um, and it's exciting to hear what you're still working on. Um, I guess I just wanted to echo um, some things that others have said. Um, Bill mentioned... Um, you know what what this month his shortfall is um for instance for us we milk 1400 yeah, cows um, um and their horror yeah, stories so, oh i'm hearing some background noise but anyway we milk 1400 cows um and right now um our, I don't know. No. our budget that i had projected at the beginning of the year um adjusted for what it looks like now based on our production uh reducing that we're having to do and the change in the milk price mm -hmm. um looks like it's a 1.2 million dollar swing um and and you know and that that's assuming that milk prices are still gonna improve throughout the year um so it, it's big money and it is urgent as bill had said um i I think direct payments are the, the way to go. I think one thing that we have to be a little bit careful about, the um, dumped milk um, idea is, is a good one, um, but the, the dumping is really happening at co-ops. Um, and I think it, we have to be careful to make sure that the money goes straight to the farmers. Mm -hmm. um, like others have said, you know, co-ops are kind of varying, but we're asked to reduce anywhere from 4% to 15% um, production. So it's hard right now. Yeah, I'll say. Oh my goodness. $1.2 million swing. That is brutal. It is. And, you know, and, and like Shannon had said, you know, we all start the year with plans with our bank. Um, and it, it's, it's really tough when it changes that much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Clara. Congratulations you. on your baby. Congratulations on your baby. Jesus thank you. Christ. Congressman Welch, I want to just um, bring it back. Um, I, I want to make sure that, um, and I know you don't, people may think these sound like horror stories or they may sound like um, uh, uh, people that have a lot of angst. Well, frankly, they do. Um, and I'd just like to kick it back to our executive director. Um, Amanda St. Pierre has worked very hard on a report, which we put in front of the Agency of Agriculture in Vermont, as well as the Agency of Commerce um, and the governor and, and have pre presented this to the House and Senate Ag Committee. So Amanda, just so that we can kind of shape what this means in okay. totality to our, our farmers, that would be great. Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, so we, we looked at um, the Northeast Ag Forecast that Agrimark puts out. I think everybody who's in dairy or aware of dairy looks at that as the price forecaster in the Northeast. And we looked at that going into, I'll say pre-COVID, and the projected milk price per hundredweight was going to be around 1950, which is a lot better than it has been. And certainly the work that we've done as an industry over the last four years, we've really worked on our cost of production and being more efficient. And then we took the price of milk in the next several months that it's projected to be at um, based on that same uh, forecast and also looking at the information the Agency of Ag had put out as far as our Vermont production and number of farms and that information, I believe Diane Bothfeld compiles that on a regular basis. Um, 
And it wasn't too hard to look at that we are going to be looking at a $14 million per month decrease in just that price going about seven to $8 a hundred weight mm -hmm. across Vermont. And that $14 million a month is what circulates in our states, in our counties, in our towns, seven to eight times that money will go around in our Vermont economy. So it's not just a hit to us personally, it's a hit to our whole community. And we looked at the several months that will be the worst. It's gonna be between three and four months projected, we're hopeful. Um, and the losses were about 42 million just for that three month period. And we looked at additionally that each co-op is trying to do what they can to manage this supply of milk right now due to the COVID losses, the different types of industry that's buying it and the packaging and, and all that kind of stuff. And it, it, it came out as that. I, you know, Agrimark came out with a 6% reduction. Uh, DFA, which is also now St. Albans Co-op, is looking at reducing it by 15%. So at a time where we're locked into the cost of our milk and, and, and making of the milk, um, we're now looking at a supply management uh, program, which we were all still in support of. You remember how hard we worked <laughs> with your help and so close to getting this market stabilization, which would have been really helpful right now. But just the timing of them unveiling this, while we understand the necessity to do something, is really like a double whammy. Um, and so we're hopeful, but it's that shortfall that we're not mm -hmm. sure how we're going to bridge how our communities are going to bridge because that dollar goes to right. the local store and uh, and people who live off that income. Right. No, thank you, Amanda. Appreciate that. So um, I think we're at the point where you, you get the gist of what um, Vermont dairy producers are going through and what the Alliance is trying to do um, to engage with um, the administration and the legislature, and even just trying to get some of the first CARES Act money out the door. Um, and, and we have worked with the Agency of Ag, and I do know that the Deputy Secretary, Allison Eastman, is on. And Allison, if you wanted to say a couple words, we'd be happy to have you. Yeah, thank you for that opportunity, Heather. Um, I just will be brief in my statement and uh, really appreciate the work uh, that is being done and noting that uh, those within the ag sector have remained open and providing the great, wonderful food. Um, and I appreciate Josh's notes as well for reminding us how difficult it's been during this time um, with the unemployment. We've heard that not just in dairy, but some of our other sectors, meat, poultry, um, the slaughterhouse facilities as well. Um, so thank you for continuing to um, work within all of those uh, tough situations. Uh, I talked to Anson before coming on the call today. Um, he sends his regrets. We appreciate the congressional delegation continuing to listen and be the ears. Um, he did want me to uh, say thank you to VDPA for continuing conversations on how we can assist with direct payments on a state level. Um, I know that there's a lot of... Um, folks out there, uh, some angst waiting for the messaging on that. And uh, Anson did meet with the governor today and we're hoping uh, midweek next week we'll be making that announcement. So uh, the plan is to continue to work with the legislature. Uh, Senate Ag has been um, very forward in wanting to move this quickly, as are we. Uh, though we have not released uh, the package yet, we are working to uh, promulgate the uh, total individuals that this would affect. So hopefully we're able to get those payments out sooner. So we are doing work behind the scenes at this moment with the hopes that legislature and the administration can work together and we can hit the ground running getting the payments out. So um, again, midweek next week, we're hoping Governor and Anson met today. Uh, so please stay tuned. Uh, we apologize. We can't pull all this together uh, sooner. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, could we hear from Tom Hickley for a minute? Thank you, Bill. Um, thank you, Congressman Welch. Uh, I'm, I'm involved with agribusiness. I am not a producer, but every, uh, every penny that comes into my house and supports my family is derived from the dairy farmers that are suffering on this call and even more broadly across the country. And so I can only really speak in generalities because I don't receive a milk check. 
I think um, mostly uh, we don't need direct payments. I mean, we need them in the short term, certainly, but we need open markets, um, fair markets. We need infrastructure that moves products around the country. And we need to have relationships with our trading partners that aren't adversarial. Um, so that I think I think uh, U.S. dairy products are are extremely desired all over the country, all over the world, and we don't have the opportunity to to make those products in Vermont and and get them out there if they can't move from point A to point B, and uh, that's that's really w what I see, and all the people like me who um, work in agribusiness and re rely on uh, you know the dairy. Uh, economy to support our families are are feeling the same thing these guys are so uh, I, I encourage you to to really think big um, to make sure that that uh, the dairy people in Vermont get what they deserve from from the money that's out there but also um, think a little bit bigger and and uh, help us get these products moved all over the place thank you and thanks Tom thank you Heather um questions? Yeah, so um, Congressman Welch and uh, the rest of the delegation. So I think um, really what the Vermont Dairy Producers Alliance wants to know is what can we do to help you? We know that you're, you're trying. Um, I think you, you get an idea of what is going on on the ground, but, but honestly, what can we do to help you? Well, you're really kind. You're really kind to ask that. Uh, and um, the fact is that just keeping these farms operating through this uh, extraordinary ordeal uh, has got to be the focus of the farm effort. I mean, I just can't hear about $1.2 million swing, uh, this, this collapse in price, you know, having the obligate, having your daughter just graduating from UVM and have all that ambition and hope uh, in this wonderful farm. and. Uh, will you be able to take that on? So it's kind of you to ask me, but I got to say, your hands are full. I mean, our job down here with Bernie and Patrick uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and I is to try to get, it's a combination of things, all right? We've got number one, I actually do think we've got to get direct payments, but politically that's tough for this period of time where as a result of the COVID virus, everything everywhere about every industry has been just hammered. Uh, you know, this is not unique to dairy. Uh, it's not even unique to agriculture. And in fact, what we have done is, is unprecedented. We've had direct payments to individuals, those $1,200 checks. We've had that direct support for unemployment, including making people who are uh, uh, independent contractors or self-employed eligible. Uh, we've done some small business help with the PPP, but every we've done direct payments to hospitals. You know, they, as a result of the COVID virus, lost an immense amount of revenue because they had to stop all business in effect. You know, we use the term elective procedure, but some of those are cancer treatments. Um, and, it, it, you know, it's not like uh, just cosmetic surgery. So there's been an acknowledgement that this public health pandemic that requires social distancing has as its collateral consequence shutting down the economy. So that's why direct payments, that's why I actually do talk about direct payments because we're doing that. It's an extraordinary thing. It can't be sustained over the long haul, but as Tom said, that's not what you're, anyone's looking for. You want stable markets and that's where some of the things that, uh, uh, that many of you there have been working on uh, kind of supply management, opening up foreign markets. You know, these tariffs have really hurt us in our market with China. It's really hurt Agrimark and, you know, all the, the whey product that we used to uh, export. It was a tremendous uh, uh, supplement to the revenue of Agrimark. That's all gone uh, by and large because of the trade policies. So those things are within our control and we should reverse those policies. But there's this shorter term situation where, uh, we're trying to get money that goes out to the farmers, but there's a lot of resistance to direct payment in ag. 
And it's the scope of the problem to some extent, because obviously in Vermont, we focus on dairy, <clears throat> but in the Midwest, it's a focus on hogs. Um, so uh, you're kind of asking what to do, but in fact, the challenge is for us here to see if we can get some money into your pocket to address the plunge in the milk price. And hopefully that is over sooner rather than later. But as one of the speakers mentioned, we just don't know, we really don't know. Uh, what's been good is the solidarity of the dairy producers. Um, and it's certainly a pleasure for me uh, to be working not only with you, but um, just shoulder to shoulder with, uh, uh, with uh, Patrick and Bernie. Uh, and we're all in down here. And there's a lot of folks that I think agree with us. Um, Secretary Purdue is not a big fan of, um, of uh, the, the steps we need to take to um, maintain our small farms, but uh, Senator Leahy's uh, got his ear and is advocating with him constantly on our behalf. So, uh, you know, that we're in this. We don't know how it's going to end up. We know what we have to do, and I think that stabilize the price and get something in your pocket that's closer to the cost of production, and then make some of these longer term uh, changes that require us to focus on local production. I think. Uh, Manage, supply management uh, and opening up those foreign markets. I don't know if uh, Tom has anything or Senator Sanders' office has anything they'd like to add. <clears throat> sure, um, and thank you, Congressman, uh, and thanks for giving us a few minutes on this call. Um, yeah, I think what you're doing this afternoon is is most helpful to communicate communicate with us clearly what you think will work best. Uh, and, you know, we heard loud and clear, I think on the call today that uh, um, a floor under class one is, is a high priority, a little bit less about the dairy margin coverage program, although I, I know that would be helpful, but that, that helps us to focus. And then realizing, of course, as you all know, that with dairy, uh, it, as soon as we try to legislate on a dairy issue, it becomes regional pretty quickly. And, and working within the industry to help uh, find things that can be agreed, agreed to across regions. You know, we need the upper Midwest on board. They have a lot of power in the house uh, on the Ag Committee with Peterson. And it's just a matter of what we can possibly do. So uh, I know there's people on this call that have a pretty significant voice nationally within the industry. And so just working as closely as you can with our offices on what can be done and making sure we understand what your priorities are. And we'll work with you to keep the pressure on the USDA. They do have a fair amount of uh, money right now at their disposal and seem to be moving on getting the first tranche of direct payments out. But let's let's keep the pressure on to make sure that the rules are published and those, those checks get cut as soon as possible. I, I don't know, Andrew, if you have anything more to add as far as how uh, you know this this group can be most helpful. Well, I think thanks, Tom. I, I think um, you hit the nail on the head in terms of solidarity across regions is is necessary, especially when we're talking about uh, congressional politics. Um, and I was I was glad to hear Bill mention um, trying to get the ear of former Secretary Vilsack. Um, I, I think you know this needs to be sort of a whole of sector approach um, to, to make sure that we get what dairy needs in any future legislative packages. Um, I also want to make sure to mention, um, although USDA has not yet rolled out its actual application or parameters for the direct assistance payments, um, as Tom mentioned, they are getting close and they have actually posted the necessary forms that farmers will need to fill out to apply for uh, direct assistance once it is available. Um, they so and they have begun to encourage farmers to get those forms filled out in advance um, so that you can enter the portal the minute it opens. Um, those are found at farmers.gov slash CFAP, C-F-A-P. Um, and if you scroll down, you'll see the forms um, I mean, I think as Congressman Welch mentioned, I mean, it's the CARES Act passed 
what, seven weeks ago um, mm-hmm. and included a great deal of direct cash assistance to farmers who desperately need it. Um, so while it is certainly unacceptable that, that USDA has not moved money out the door, um, I, I did just want to make sure that everyone uh, flagged that those forms are now available um, and hopefully get the assistance um, not a day later than, than is available. Thanks. Well, I, I, I would like to say uh, we recognize that your three offices in DC as congressional delegates, you you folks wield a good deal of power and you're, you're pretty well respected, I think, nationally. So uh, at least we have that going for us. Well, Bill, we'll do all we can. Well, I, I wasn't saying that to put any pressure on you. You, you likely got all the pressure you need right now, but, uh, but just, just uh, recognizing the, the, the way it is. In other words. Right, thank you. Yeah, you bet. Erica, did you have a follow-up? I just wanted to say thank you so much. And um, it's, I, you know, for the sake of not wanting to take too much of your time, these, these calls are extremely helpful to us and it'd be great in a few weeks if we, you know, trying to convene again. I, I don't know if that's possible for, for you all, but, um, you know, really thinking about, uh, like, after these direct payments start to um, roll out where the gaps are, um, it's just really, really helpful. So thanks. Um, <clears throat> we're available. I mean, this is uh, existential. So anything that you want to talk about whenever you want to do that, we're here. We really appreciate that. And, and Alex Piper helped put this together at the last minute um, after one of uh, your colleagues um, left for maternity, paternity leave. So we really appreciate you picking up the pieces, Alex, and making sure that this meeting happened. Yes, thank you, oh. Alex. <clears throat> thank yeah. you. Well, thank all of you. And uh, Heather, thank you uh, for doing such a good job moderating this. Here's Erica. <laughs> Hi, Erica. <laughs> so we will um, we will stay in touch for sure. Uh, you can certainly bet on that. Um, the, I guess the last closing thing I would I would say I'm not sure I heard it clear and succinctly, but one of the things I hear across all sectors is the PPP program had some issues in the fact that it started on the day that the the, the deposit went into your account, which wasn't really flexible enough. And so if there's any way to make that more flexible and perhaps think about extending it for another grant period. Well, Heather, that we did do that. We're doing that tomorrow. I mean, okay. we got to get it through the Senate, but we're extending the period from eight weeks to 24 weeks and we're expanding and extending when you have to do it all the way to the end of the year, December 31st. And, huh. we're, and we're making it more flexible on that 75% labor versus 25% expense uh, allocation. Okay. So we heard loud and clear from uh, folks about Good. that, and we are changing that. And that, I think, will be something the Senate supports, because uh, it's been a problem for everybody. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank we you for your time. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.